Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about buttons in Pygame uh, Let's see how we can create some buttons and how we can make them clickable So there are a few steps in order to create a button So first of all we have to create a rectangle and display it on the screen Second of all we have to create some text and position it on the top of the, the rectangle Then we have to add some special effects to give them the feel of the button So for example when we click uh, to make it look different and to add the actual functionality of the button so make the button do something when we click on it so here we have the code that we have already written before that just uh, is pretty basic and now we can go ahead after our uh, game surface we can make our font uh, object so font obj equals to pi game dot sys uh, dot excuse me dot font dot sys font and in here we can make this an Arial in uh, 20 size and then we have our text surface object and we set this equal to font obj dot render and in here we could just have uh, something like play uh, true and red if you remember uh, this is what we did last time that we created a text surface object using a font object so <clears throat> inside of our uh, loop first of all we have to draw the rectangle so let's go ahead and do by game dot draw dot rect and in here we have to specify the game surface the color so let's just say yellow and then we have our x and y starting values so let's just use 10 and 10 and then we have the width and the height of the rectangle so let's do 100 and let's do 25 for y after that we need to do game surface dot blit uh, text surface obj and now we have to use the same starting coordinates as here so all we're doing is we're pasting it uh, on the screen. We're pasting the text surface object on the screen. So if we run this Excuse me, that's from last time. So there we go. If we run this you can see we get sort of like this uh, button But this doesn't really feel like a regular button uh, the text is misplaced the actual rectangle is not the size that we really want and the problem is that if we change the text to something bigger, so for example play uh, the game right now, uh, this will be too big to fit inside of our rectangle. So how can we fix all of these problems? The best way is to create a new uh, function to take all of these values into account and align the text inside the button automatically. So let's create this kind of function outside of our game loop so let's define display button and now we'll have to specify some parameters so first of all we have the text that we want to include then we have the style then we have the size the color uh, a bg color value x and y so let's go ahead and explain each one individually so we have the text inside of the button then in here goes the font, we have the size of the text, then we have the color that we want to use for the text, then we have the background color, meaning that this is the color of the button, and then we have the X and Y values to specify the location of our button. So, let's go ahead and define this method. So first of all, let's create a font object and set this equal to pygame dot font dot sys font just like before and now this will take style and size as parameters here then uh, we have to create the text surface object so text surface object this will be equal to the font object dot render in here we can specify the text uh, let's say true here and color over here after that, let's create our rect object, so rect obj. This is exactly what we did last time, 
up until this point. So text surface object dot get uh, rect. Then let's actually center our object. So rect obj dot center, and this will take values of x and y that we specified here as arguments in our function. And then let's just create a padding inside of our rectangle to make the text uh, not be exactly at the corner of the bottom. So let's do rect x and we can set this to rect obj dot left uh, minus 5. So this will just go 5 pixels away from the left side of the button so as not to touch the actual side. And then we have the rect y and let's set this equal to rect obj dot top minus 5. So we're doing the exact same thing over here. And then let's get the width and height of the rectangle and add 5 plus 5 padding for both sides. Uh, so rect width is equal to rect obj dot width plus 10 and the rect height will be equal to rect obj dot height plus 10. So this plus 10 you can think of it as plus 5 and 5 for each of these sides. So we're just creating space for that. And finally, what we have to do is buy game dot draw dot rect. And now we are drawing on the game surface with the background color. And we are drawing from rect x and rect y. And uh, the width and the height will be rect width and rect height. So let's go ahead and review all of this function because it kind of gets a little complicated. So. First of all, these, uh, up until this point, we are creating a font object, a text surface object using the font object, and a rect object uh, that we are using on the text surface object. So, then we set the center of our rect object to be the coordinates that we specify in the methods arguments. Then we start to define all of the parameters that we're going to take for the placement of the rectangle. So we're setting the rect x, the rect y, and the rect width and height. And then we're actually drawing the actual rectangle over here. And remember, just practice with all of these numbers to get the, the feel of what its value does here. You could just, for example, change this to minus 10 and see how that affects it, so that you understand better what all of these variables here are. So let's go ahead and implement this function inside of our game loop. So let's do display button. Now let's do play and let's make this uh, aerial. Let's set a font size of 20. Let's make it uh, for example red. Let's set this at 100 and 400 for y. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Oh, actually, I forgot to specify the background color. So let's say uh, red, or actually better make it blue, and the background could be red. So let's run it now. Oh, so I accidentally set this to top left. This should be top instead of top left. So let's run it again. Okay, now it runs without a problem. Actually, the only problem is now that I forgot to paste the text onto the button. So let's go ahead and do this as well. So game surface dot blit text surface object and rect object. Excuse me, rect object. So now that we pasted the text here, you can see that this is greatly positioned inside of our button. So this actually kind of starts to look like a button. It's not clickable yet and doesn't do anything, but it sort of looks uh, like a button. And you could create a menu like, so display uh, button. You could do, for example, at the very beginning, you could do quit. Then you could do e play. Set this again to 
Arial 20 and you could set this to blue, green 300 and 400 and let's just copy this again so now you could do something like uh, pause Arial 20 blue and make the button yellow this could be 500 and 400 so this could look like something like a menu over here quit play pause so as you can see we're starting to make something here that is actually look like a menu so let's go ahead and add functionality to our buttons or just effects not functionality yet so in here let's go right under this part of the code and let's create an mx and my uh, tuple this would be a pygame game dot mouse dot get position so we're getting the position of our mouse and we are storing it in mx and my so now if our rect x plus rect uh, width is greater than mx and greater than rect x and now let's do it for the y as well so rect y plus rect height is greater than my and greater than rect y so uh, this is just going to check if our mouse is between uh, the boundaries of the button so essentially if our mouse is hovering over the button and if this is true we want a pi game dot draw dot rect let's draw on our game surface let's draw with white and let's just do rect x, rect y, rect width, and rect height. So, what this is going to do now is it's going to make the background of the button white if we hover over it. So, let's see if that works. Oh, let's actually uh, do this here as an else part. So, else just do this okay so now this should work okay so as you can see when I hover over the buttons they change their color to white so why this happens we're checking if our mouse is within the boundaries of the rectangle of the button and if this is true we paint it with white if this is not true we're painting it with whatever background color was specified before so now hopefully you understand how this works so now let's add functionality to our buttons so let's go ahead and add another argument here inside of our function so let's do this mouse uh, func meaning mouse function and we want this to be something when we click on the button something should happen so let's go ahead and over here after the get pause let's do button underscore rect and this could be pygame dot rect so let's just draw a rectangle rect x sorry rect x rect y rect width and rect height okay and then after all of this here is done after the rect object we could return a button rect and mouse function so the only thing you have to keep in mind now is that we're creating a rectangular object here and we're returning that alongside with the mouse function as a form of a list so now let's go ahead and define another function and I will uh, it will all make sense in a second so define button action so this is what happens when we press the button so what we need is mouse position and rect func list so this is the list that we are returning here so what this is going to do is it's going to rect and mouse func so this is just going to split uh, the rect and mouse function from our list so rect func list so this just splits it 
into two separate variables here. And now if our rect dot uh, collide point mouse pause and just have in mind that this will just uh, be true if uh, we click the mouse on the button so if we do that then what we need to do is execute the mouse uh, function so what this whole thing means is uh, first of all we split the list and then we're saying if we click on the uh, sp this particular mouse position so if we click on the button we are executing whatever the mouse function is so now let's define some other functions that would be helpful so let's define quit game for the quit button so pygame dot quit and also exit and then we have to define something like print uh, message and this will do just a printing statement that will say uh, button clicked so we know this works so let's go ahead and review all of the things that are happening here but first of all let's just fix the display button here as a function so let's add a quit game here and we don't actually have to specify that this is a function let's just add the name of the function and let's do print message here and also print message here to just verify that this works so what happens now is we call this function over here so up until this point you know exactly what this does here we return the button rect and mouse function so afterwards what is now called is the button action that then calls whatever mouse function we have set if we are actually clicking the button so in order to make this button work we need to add an event so let's go inside of our event loop over here and for this time we could just delete this from here and put this on the top of our game loop and also let's fill this before so we're filling with black and then we're setting all of the buttons and then we're checking for events so let's just add another case for the event so if event dot type is equal to pygame game dot mouse button down remember we did this uh, some lessons ago so now let's call button action event dot pause and let's do uh, let's actually make this go inside variables so let's create objects of that kind so exit game list is equal to that and then we have print message list and print message list one so afterwards what we want to do is in here we can call the exit game list and let's just do this should be event not event and let's just copy this and paste it sometimes over and the whole thing that we need to change is print message list and print message list one so what happens is if we press the button down the button action is triggered so a button action is triggered for each single one of the buttons that we have set and what this does it is it is checking if we are pressing the button or if we're pressing something else and if we are actually pressing the button it calls the functions of the individual button that we set so this is a little more complicated logic please try to keep up so let's just review it one more time before we test it so first of all we're setting all of the buttons then we're checking for the events so if we're pressing the button of the mouse down then we have to call all of these button actions and all of these button actions are checking if we're pressing the button so if we're pressing the button we're actually calling the quit game or the print message depending on which button we clicked 
So let's go ahead and run this. If I press quit, the button just the, the window just closes. If I press play, you can see button is clicked is displayed on the output. Or if I press pause, again the same thing happens. So hopefully you understand how this uh, works. If not, just try to practice and uh, copy the code and start reading it and see uh, what connects with what because function calling can be a little complicated because you need to go back and forth in the code to actually understand what happens but that is basically it as far as buttons go so essentially buttons just have a text a rectangle and a different event that triggers a function uh, that is what the button does and now we're just quitting and printing something on the screen but later on you will see that buttons can be really helpful and trigger uh, different really important events that are crucial to make our game playable so that's it thanks a lot i will see you on the next lesson